What's the deal, Dre? Dre. Or what's the deal, Mel? Or should I say, Melissa, man, I hope you're both doing well. Uh -huh. This is Gamble, or should I say, Surge? Just to show you that I love you, even though we get, get on each other's nerves. But that's family, right? right? Let's keep this family tight. I'm still writing day and night. Yeah, you know what I'm like. I'm still on the mic, mic but not on a hype. The storyline is all time, man. My future's looking bright, and it's looking like. This goes out to all my soldiers, all my real people out there, there for me through thick and thin, you know. I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate for everything that you bring. Today is prize giving day for all pupils of Gladesmore. The school uses the event to acknowledge their high achievers by giving them a certificate to mark the achievement. My name is Grace Hull. I'm almost 14 in 10 days, um, and I'm in year nine. In preparation for the Value Life March, Grace has had to juggle a full school timetable with being a member of the school council organising committee. The main aim of the campaign is to raise awareness and to raise, you know, and hopefully gradually over time change the mentality of a lot of the people and about what they're thinking and what then leads into committing knife and gun crimes. Hey, is that Lucy Cope? Grace's primary task in the campaign is to help secure speakers and celebrities. Today, she is arranging a meeting with Lucy Cope from Mothers Against Guns, hoping to convince her to be a speaker at the march. And she said she'll show you where a lot of the gun crime takes place in South East London. Oh, right. So yeah, so she wants she's, right. she really wants to like do a lot of that. Okay, so what did you say? Twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock. Citizenship coordinator Lee Carroll takes Grace to meet Lucy Cope. I want her to support our campaign because she's been um, at the forefront of the uh, of the fight to um, get guns, primarily guns, off of our streets. So we already asked if she wants to come and do it for the um, to come to our march and head the rally and stuff. But I think it would be nice if we kind of personalised it more by coming down and hearing her story and just seeing you know what she's been doing. Lucy Cope has lost two of her sons to knife and guns and has agreed to take Grace and Lee to the cemetery where her sons are buried. Hi, nice to meet you. When I buried my first son there in 1998, there was loads of greenery. Mm. Into space, so you look at that, and there is no space. There's no space, up. there, so I'll take up. Quite sad. I'm round about where, where Damien rests. Um, I don't go often, but where he rests, there is a lot of um, gun crime victims, my victims. I don't know who it's from, but they're being treated. Hello. 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 Hello bad enough to do it twice, but like, it's just, hmm. The amount of people that's been murdered in this cemetery, either with a, a, a firearm or a knife, is, it is terrible, it's unbelievable. You said about seven-year-olds, you know, at that yeah, sort of Yeah, I mean, age. they, 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 they need to be something. told. They didn't just take Damien, they shot me. And I didn't know the person who shot Damien. His brothers didn't know them, his sisters didn't know them, but it, they shoot a whole family, they shoot, his great grandmother, they, they, they shoot the whole lot of it, and I can't go certain places with that bullum, it's there. I can't hear certain music, it's there. What did I do to the boy who shot Damien? Nothing, I didn't even know him. I am not the same person I was in 2002. I died in 2002. And I saw pain in, in my kids' faces, like, they don't realise. And they, just, they always say, we want our mum back. But I can't be that person anymore. I can't laugh and joke and run around and play with my grandkids. I don't feel happy anymore. I find it horrible to be here. I, it, it's, it's, not, it's not right. It's, I mean, there's two of my kids here and the names are on benches and headstones and it should be mum. I think to talk to Lucy Cope and to hear, you know, how deeply her son getting shot affected her, how like, I think it's just really, really emotional, like emotionally draining.
There are only three weeks to go before the march, but the Year 9 students have other things on their minds, as today is Parents' Day. Not one! Not one! I'm interest when I gave the forms out, but nobody's actually brought any forms back in. Someone tell me why they haven't handed their form in. Yes, tell me. Lost it. You lost it. Do you think it's something that you're not interested in? It's something that, that is not important to you? Gun and knife crime? No. no, you don't know anybody that's been stabbed? You haven't read anywhere about anybody being stabbed or shot? No? Yeah. Come on, guys, wake up. Right, who wants another form? Who needs another form? Right, you need to hand this in tomorrow, please. Anybody who hands theirs in and completes it, the parents to complete it, you'll get a water bottle, so it's quite a little bit of a walk, and then you'll get your t-shirts and whistles and stuff on the day. Guys, let's be a bit active. Let's make a stand in our community. This isn't my only role in this school. I am not the, the, the gun march coordinator. I'm doing other things as well. So, so we get, get behind. So I'm now sitting here thinking, oh gosh. And it, it will go fine, but it doesn't mean to say you ain't going to panic and you ain't going to stress about certain things. You're teaching in here, okay? You ain't going to stress over certain things. So it's important now to involve the students back in the process. We know what needs to be done and what needs to be put in place and getting the students to address that. Indeed, the kids' hard work in publicising the event has paid off. A BBC reporter from Radio 1 Extra has come to interview some of the school council members for the Drive Time show. Confidence and their esteem is a definite factor of that. And, you know, if they, if they don't feel they're doing very well academically or socially, maybe, they, then they turn, you know, to a gun to, you know, or a knife to make them feel big. Uh, to protect themselves from other people's knives or just to be part of the crowd. Um, you spoke to Jeanette Cully, you know it's about um, trying to sort out an interview with you um, for our Family Life March. When would be a convenient time for you to do that? Tomorrow, both of you, um, going now to Choice FM to interview Marty and Kate Jay because obviously um, Choice FM has been very much uh, a part and parcel of Now, we're going to The Voice uh, to do an interview, which um, if I wasn't in this campaign, I, was, I wouldn't really do that. OK, why, why I'm the age of 24? Shane and Amina visit The Voice, a weekly newspaper servicing the UK's black community. Is going to go up on the day of the march? Or no, is it out? no, which we're, we're looking, we're shooting for, for the end of the year, okay. for the 50,000 at the moment. You know, we've got, you know... Who will they be again? Well, it depends what we call a celebrity, do you know what I mean? Martin J. I'm, a, I'm very against gun and knife crime myself. Yeah. And, you know, I'm all for anything, or I'm all for uplifting anything that tries to represent that. Next stop, Choice FM, another opportunity to get their message across and promote the march. Choice FM 96.9 and 107.1, it's your boy Martin J. We're live to London, hope you're feeling good. I am joined right now by three very special young gentlemen that have come all the way from Tottenham, Gladesmore Community School to be precise, and they're here to talk about Value Life, which is their campaign uh, about you know, the crime that's on our streets. Welcome to Choice FM, guys. So, guys, tell me, Value Life, explain a little bit about, about it to me. Who wants to kick off? Um... Well, Value Life was a campaign set up by nine students and two adults. Uh -huh. um, it first kicked off through Youth Facts, which encourages young people to make a change in their community. The, the, the campaign was already in session when you joined. What made you want to get involved in it? Well, basically, because my brother told me it was a good success that how how everybody like people had turned up like Lucy Cope, how her son had died, and she was there with Mothers Against um, Gun and Knife Crime. So I thought that I would I would want to be part of it as well to make a change in the community. I think I needed to deliver a message to let youngsters know that you yourself determine your own destiny, and that message that I wanted to get across, I felt. Choice Action was a great way of me doing it and fusing the fact that we have got an epidemic 
in this country with regards to gun crime and knife crime. You know, you walk out of a train station, someone's got stabbed. You walk down the high street, someone else has got stabbed. So live on air, Martin Jay's committed himself to coming down to the Valley Life Peace Walking Rally. Yeah, not even committing. That's that. That would be an honour to be there, man. I'd be very happy to be there. You know what I mean? I've done a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff with Gladesmore, and I think it's important. I live in Edmonton, so I'm not far from Gladesmore. You know, and that's my community. And anything that I could do to help, I'm there, man. Definitely. Basically, we're marching from Gladesmore Community School down to the Dominion Centre in Wood Green and where we're going to have a rally with um, just people talking about the valley life and how we, they could probably change it. Come down to the real deal and see what it's like. Come and walk on this march, yeah? Just walk next to a mother that's had her son killed for no reason whatsoever and feel the atmosphere on the street and then do something about it. Two weeks to go before the march and the merchandise starts to arrive. Right, 90 or in. Sit down, please. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Jan, where's Jan? Come and get your water bottle, Jan. Jan. Well done, Jan. Those who have signed up to the march are given water bottles as a reward. No one said organising a campaign like this was going to be easy. What's going on, class? What's going on? What's happening? What's on TV on Wednesday that's so important that nobody ain't signed their forms? Tell me, someone tell me. Serious as gun and knife crime, and some of us accused to be a bit apathetic, a bit, a bit lethargic. Go in Turkey, Monday. I can allow that one. Yo, no good reason. Get your form filled in, mate. Come on, sort it out. The marketing is not limited to the students. Teachers are also given water bottles as an incentive to promote the march in their classes. We don't want to force anybody, and we've never forced anybody to be part of the campaign. It's, it's what people have, the kids have inside of them, and that's what's quite pleasing. So if there are kids that will stray away, there are kids that will kind of filter out, you know, so be it. <laughs> The march is only days away and it also marks the end of the school year. A time for reflection and goodbyes. With the pressure off and the year behind them, the kids not involved in organising the march can relax. No one knows it. You've got a heart but you've never thought to follow it. Living your life decisions being made by others when now it's time that you release your true colours. true colours. But for the teachers, there is still the fine detail and logistics involved with the march to sort out. To make sure that everything runs smoothly on the day, a visit to the local police station is required. We're going to set up in the main playground and students will be given merchandise. Um, the t-shirts have been made out, uh, whistles, a range of things so we need to identify our group. Then okay. again, down West Green Road. Yeah, right till Duckett's Common, right to Turnpike yep. Lane and then obviously right onto the High Road, across the High Road to the Dominion Centre. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. Yep. Uh, three coaches will take the first set back to the school, the High Road, they'll go and get some food, those will be dispersed. By the time the coaches go back to get the other set, It'll be smaller numbers, they'll be gone, hopefully. Yeah. Either eating or on their way home, bring the second set, and so, so on. Yeah, quite clear, yeah. 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 Right. I mean, as always, we, what is always built into all of this is the flexibility of, of communicating as well as, as we, we always do. Yeah. We are li liaised directly. We're going to have one of our officers in, it's likely to be an unmarked minibus, police minibus, 
at the, the rear of the march as well. So what we have then is also an opportunity um, that you know, if some people clearly are struggling, and, and let's face it, in this heat, people might, yeah. that they can be put on board that as well. Please pass that. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, Jim. As always, thanks yeah. very much. Thank you. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I must have got the wrong side of bed this morning. I tell you, I'm not in the mood this morning. I really ain't. So some, some nobody best fix my spirit today. The day before the march, tension is running high. This no, I need, I need. <gasps> let's fang shui this office. Can you turn them, <laughs> turn that desk around? <laughs> yeah. But the tension is eased when the Value Life T-shirts arrive. Like each box has got a different um, size in it. You guys, we're going to put sweets with it as well. Sweets. So two sweets and a T-shirt. Yeah? The campaign never loses sight of the fact that the day is all about the children. For those involved in organising the march, there are no illusions to the enormity of the task. Well, I think it's because gun crime has become so popular within the, the, the youth in Haringey, Hackney, out to London as well, Birmingham, Manchester. It's just on the increased. And I think if children make a stand and show that we're not going to stand for this, you know, this is not what we want for our future. When they see children making a stand, it's different to when it's adults. But when it's children making a stand, showing that they're not accepting this, we don't appreciate it, we don't approve of it, you'll, you'll get any adult support. So we had people coming out of their hairdressers and yeah, 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 cheering, people walking down the road. We even had a few people follow us as well. Yeah, so there's nothing that can be done to make sure that we get these on time. We've got an event tomorrow at 9.45. With the preparations for tomorrow now 99% complete, yeah, know, will Miss Coley start to relax? So I've got to deal with America about that, yeah? I think you've been really unhelpful. What's your name, please? Yeah, can you spell that, please? Well, no, it's not really, but I suppose it has to be. All right, fine. Thanks, bye. All right, okay, well, basically, um, no dog takes tomorrow. Um, day, after, day, day after, baby, you know? Um, America didn't give them a valid tax number or our VAT number. So because they didn't have that, there was a hold up at the airport. So it's just pure bureaucracy. Okay. We look on the bright side, we've got sun. And the balloons. Books up, guns down, books up. Has delivered these, he's got a hospital appointment, and he's convinced Jodie that they will stay up till tomorrow. Oh, I swear, Dan, do you know what I mean? Oh. I'll give Jodie a hundred quid if they do. Do you know what I mean? Oh, God. What else, no? <laughs> it's nearly over. No dog tag. After 14 weeks of extreme hard work by pupils and staff, Gladesmore's expression of citizenship is about to take to the streets. What's your purpose? What's the reason why you here? Why you here? What's the reason that you're breathing? Why you here? Why you here? What's the meaning when you're dreaming and believing that you're breathing for a reason, but the reason is a clear? What's your purpose? What's the reason why you here? Why you here? What's the reason that you're breathing? Why you here? Why you here? What's the meaning when you're dreaming and believing that you're breathing for a reason, but the reason is not clear? Everybody has ambitions. Everybody has a mission that was given to them by the Lord, but they lack the vision and they lack the faith because they fear there's too much competition. So instead of going after it, they sit down reminiscing, wishing they could be the ones that's making all the difference in this world because they know they can't depend on politicians. Imagine you could be the one that's making the decision. Would you listen to the people? Uh -huh. Or be a contradiction? Would you stay with tradition? Or go make a difference? Would you state your religion? And say you're a Christian? Would you act like a saint? Or try to be something you ain't? Or would you represent yourself in every picture that you paint? Would you follow your beliefs? Or keep your faith and restraint? Or would you go on your knees and show the people you ain't? Afraid to show that Jesus is the Christ?